These two men are both elderly. Donald Trump is an elderly man who, for whatever reason, was given nine seconds to take a iconic photo op during an active shooter situation. Weird situation, we'll figure that out one day. Um, but his survival of that and, and bouncing right back and going right to his convention is being conveyed in the media world as a sign of strength. This uh, current president of the United States is 81 years old and has COVID. Should he be fine in a couple of days? Doesn't that convey exactly the same thing? No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. What I mean, are you serious, Joy? Are you serious? I mean, <laughs> these MSNBC hosts look totally on him. Imagine for for Sheikh Uga to be laughing at Joy. What does that tell you? I I, I never in my life imagined I would see Sheikh Uga laughing at somebody's you know. So insufferable uh, comments. Imagine Shank. This is coming from Shank. Like, I'm I'm surprised. Are you? Inched. Several of them, including Joy Reid, were questioning if the event was staged in a sense. They're like, oh, it's a really weird coincidence. What's going on? And look at what she said. For nine seconds, was allowed to do a photo. He's the president of the United States. He just got shot. And he, former president of the United States. Yeah, I got you, but the former presidents are still called president. Right. And mm. so he, he, you're begrudging him putting up his fist after he got shot. First of all, that's just nuts. Second of all, any of these things like, oh, isn't it curious how they stage things? No, you're egging on people on your side to think crazy things. Conspiracy theory. Yeah, Michael Steele did the same thing again on MSNBC. They're starting to really sound like the MAGA version, uh, you know, uh, uh, on the Democratic side for sure. And then, what kind of lunatic thing is it to say? Oh, you got COVID, you got shot. It's the same thing. No, it's not. I had COVID a couple of weeks ago. It was a normal cold. So that's look. COVID look. now is especially if you're. I mean, I get it. He's 81, and it's a, a little bit more of a risk. And God knows what happened. Two, two, two. I hope nothing happens to President Biden, and something could happen. But getting a cold is not the same thing as getting shot in the head. Like you, you're embarrassing yourself by saying ridiculous things like this. And unfortunately, Anna, they've kind of trained their audience yeah. to want this. They I know, want I know. some sort of criticism of Donald Trump under any and all circumstances. But guys, there's a billion things to criticize him on policy and the other crazy stuff he does. You and when you criticize him on those things, you lose credibility when you also criticize him for how he got shot. Thanks for watching. Our audience has helped. I don't know. <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing Shank Uga sound this reasonable. Mm -hmm. I'm doubting. I don't trust. I don't trust Shank. There's something I miss here because did you guys see him on Piers Morgan's show where he was arguing with Piers, still on this same near assassination of Trump? He was not. He was not agreeing. For him to come here and be saying this, hmm, guys. I'm suspecting Shank. Something is going on. <laughs> let me let me, let's keep watching and see. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because Jake and I have been doing this for a long time. And I remember when I first started working at TYT, there was one cable news channel, Fox News, that was very clearly partisan, very clearly dishonest in their framing, deceptive in what they were telling their audiences. And since then, unfortunately, that virus has spread to all other forms of media, including left wing media, MSNBC. And so I don't have a problem with them criticizing Trump at all. We criticize Trump on this show. What I have a problem with is the way that they frame things, the way they omit certain details and certain stories. It's not helpful. And it creates these ideological bubbles in the country where rather than Finding common ground with both sides. We all hate each other. There's always division. It's always toxic. And I feel like it's leading the country in a really, really bad direction. What she said there was just, she said it with a straight face. I can't believe she said it. I'd be so embarrassed if I was on the record saying something like that. But anyway, as we know, yesterday it was confirmed that that President Biden tested positive for COVID. This is the third time in the past two years that he has tested positive for COVID. Here's what he wrote on Twitter. Uh, I tested positive for COVID-19 this afternoon, but I am feeling good and thank everyone for the well wishes. I will be isolating as I recover and during this time, I will continue to work to get the job done for the American people. Now, during MSNBC's coverage of the RNC yesterday, 
Former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki argued that it's actually going to be pretty difficult for Biden to show Democrats that he's up to the task. And that is what ultimately led to Joy Reid's interjection. Let's watch. They have a more immediate challenge right now, which is projecting to the Democratic Party. He's inevitable and he's up to this job. Yeah, well, here's the question that I have on that. These two men are both elderly. Donald Trump is an elderly man who for whatever reason was given nine seconds to take a iconic photo op during an active shooter situation. Weird situation, we'll figure that out one day. Um, but his survival of that and, th- and bouncing right back and going right to his convention is being conveyed in the media world as a sign of strength. This uh, current president of the United States is 81 years old and has COVID. Should he be fine in a couple of days? Doesn't that convey exactly the same thing? That he's strong enough, older than Trump, to have gotten something that used to really be fatal to people his age. So if he does fine out of it and comes back and is able to do rallies, isn't that exactly the same? It, it should. I mean, it's not exactly the same. It's not the same incident, but it's, all, it's an elderly man it, coming through out of an illness. It should. It's funny because Jen Psaki's face was like, yes. what are you saying? Please stop talking. But then she says it should. Of course, she does want to embarrass uh, her colleague there, uh, but that was I mean, it was, a, it was a huge cringe moment. I, I look, I don't think that uh, the MSNBC hosts understand how unhinged they sound. Uh, and they, they lost the thread a long time ago. And so guys, remember, it's, it's a dozen years ago that I'm at MSNBC as a host. And they tell me specifically, don't criticize Democrats. So that's the nature of this network. That's the culture of this network. And that's literally the guidelines of this network. So if you. Mm, Now I know when Mr. Schenk Uga got his training from. So he used to work for MSNBC. No one that. So he has gone away, got gone out of there, but MSNBC has not got out of him because he's still behaving like them. Oh, now I know. No wonder. You do that for another dozen years after I left. This is the end result. Where you're, they're so ensconced in their own bubble that they think, well, doesn't everyone irrationally just hate Donald Trump? And by because there's, as I've said a hundred times, there's plenty of rational reasons to hate Donald Trump. But when you get into the irrational and like, oh yeah, no big deal that he got shot in the ear. Oh yeah, missed his <laughs> and killed him. Could have killed him if it went an inch the other way. <laughs> no big deal. It's like getting a, a guy having a cold. Same thing. <laughs> You sound ridiculous. Okay, you, you just, sound like a lunatic. You just touched on something that I've been wanting to articulate on the show for some time now. Now's a perfect time to say it. Guys, I don't want Democrats to turn into everything they hate about their political opponents. And I feel like that's what's happening. That's a great point. Right? Like I don't want to be that. I, I want to be better than that, right? Like I don't want to dabble in conspiracies. I don't want to dehumanize people on the other side. I don't want to brush off an assassination attempt. Can you guys imagine if someone tried to kill you? You knew that there were people out there who literally wanted to kill you. And one person got real close. That is a traumatic experience. No one should have to deal with that. In a democracy, no one should have to deal with that. And we are supposed to be better than this. We're not supposed to do what Joy Reid did in that segment, and we're not supposed to make light of what happened last weekend at that Trump rally. Okay, with that said, I do want to actually give Van Jones credit, and I want to juxtapose what you heard from Joy Reid to what Van Jones actually had to say. Let's take a look. A bullet couldn't stop Trump, a virus just stopped Biden. You've got the nominees of this party getting their butts kissed. Biden's getting his butt kicked by his own party. The Democrats are coming apart, the Republicans are coming together. I I really want to thank Van Jones for saying that because it's a sobering statement to make. I'm sure he's gotten some backlash from Democrats for saying it, but it is true. And we have to look at the situation clearly and we need to improve where there's need for improvement. And our behavior should not be modeled after everything we hate on the right. So uh, with that said, Joy Reid has been under some scrutiny for previous comments that she's made regarding Saturday's assassination attempt. She in fact posted a video on her Instagram page this week questioning the extent of Trump's injury and what happened that day. Let's take a look. 
We still don't know for sure whether Donald Trump was hit by a bullet, whether he was hit by glass fragments, whether he was hit by shrapnel. We don't have those details. We actually have no details from his physician, even though this man is still a Secret Service protected, you know, and presidential candidate. We know almost nothing. We don't know why for nine full seconds. Donald Trump was allowed to stand back up during an active shooting, an active shooter situation, even though they at that point had said the shooter, the shooter was down. How would have they know? How would they, would they have known if there were more shooters or not? Nobody knew that there could have been five shooters for all they knew. Yet they allowed him to stand up in the middle of that, you know, crisis and pose for a photo and fist pump the air so he can get the iconic photo. What is the actual injury to Donald Trump's ear that's under that bandage? Shouldn't we know that by now? Jake, I'm yeah. curious what you thought about that. No, no, she's totally. Just wow. Like how far has this woman fallen to the extent that she can't even bear to, you know, empathize. Oh my God. And these are the supposedly media that's to be relaying information to the people. What is, what is all this wrong with how dark can your heart be that you sit and come up with this? Not just only in your head, that you, you think it's enough to even verbalize it to the whole world. Oh my, this is disturbing. It's totally in La La Land. I mean, that is super heavily implying that the shooting was staged. Like, oh, why did they let him stand back up? Why did they give him nine seconds to set up that photo up that was looked? I mean, she said, I don't know, she might even, I don't remember if she used the word stage, but almost everything she said was super heavily implying that it was staged. And look, and like conspiratorial things like, oh, did it really hit his ear? But guys, one more thing, hold on, Anna, sorry. Yeah. Um, the stuff about the teleprompter shattering and the glass hitting him. If you said that in the first couple of hours, which I did, that's because all those reports were flying around. And we were trying to figure out what happened True. and why the injury was so light. Right. It's totally understandable. You were saying that four or five days after the shooting, everybody knows the teleprompter didn't break. It's on tape. Everybody knows it wasn't glass. Why are you still saying that? I know. It's such a weird conspiracy theory. Like you're just. I'm sorry, man, but it's embarrassing. And look, when Republicans used to say Trump derangement syndrome, I was like, there's no such thing. They're just making that up. Anyone who criticizes Trump, they say, oh, you got Trump derangement syndrome. But apparently there is Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. And it doesn't affect most of Trump's critics at all, right? But it apparently infected almost all the MSNBC hosts. What she was saying there sounded like QAnon kind of crazy talk. Yeah, I agree. And look, the the final thing I'll say is, look, even if you <laughs> take Trump out of it, okay, for the people who are alleging that, oh, this was all staged, a person is dead, okay, a Trump rally goer, a father of two daughters, dead. He was shot and killed as he was like shielding his family from, from the shooter. And two other individuals were in critical condition. Uh, I think their uh, condition has improved slightly, but they're still in the hospital and it's still serious. Yeah, it's just last thing, because I want you to think about how crazy these conspiracy theories are. So what do you think happened? They fired real bullets that killed Corey, the firefighter who was killed while shielding his family. They hit a couple of other people, but they meant to do all that. They meant to murder that poor guy, but then Trump Ducks down, and what do you do? Like in the old wrestling days, Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, would roll under the uh, wrestling ring and would cut his own forehead with a razor, so it looked like when he got hit by the chair that it was all bloody and stuff. Do you think Trump was carrying it around? Oh, just in case there's an assassination attempt. Oh, perfect. There's one now. Here, I'll cut my ear. I mean, what kind of what is this? Come on, who's this crazy? No, obviously he the bullet grazed his ear. What she was like. What do you think it was? We don't know if it was a bullet. There's a bullet flying by him that the New York Times photographer captured yeah. on tape. What else do you need? No, that's totally Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah.
There's nothing, if Trump was riddled with 28 bullets there and died, she'd say like, oh, pretty convenient. Dies like a martyr and a hero and then helps JD Vance become president. I wonder if this was staged. Okay, yeah. if you're gonna be a lunatic, I don't. I guess you got a good shot at being an MSNBC host. So Trump's son Eric, by the way, said that uh, the ear injury from the shooting not serious, uh, and he didn't even need stitches. So for Joy Reid, if you're wondering, you know how serious the injury was, there you have it. His own son said. He didn't need stitches. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if he needs that bandage, and that's a bit of a staging on that part. He's milking it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's milking it, but that's okay. He got shot. He's allowed to milk yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And that is a traumatic experience, by the way. Yes. Okay. Anyone else who nearly died, like literally like half an inch, he'd be gone. Okay. That is a traumatic experience. So just try to be a, a human being. Yeah, that's that's what it is. I mean, they've dehumanized Trump so much, understandably, because he such, says, he says such cool things. terrible things where he dehumanizes others, right? But they've like got a wall in their head for all humans and then Trump on the other side of the wall. And that's not right. As Anna said earlier, we can't devolve into doing the same things that they do and the things that we didn't like about them. Mm -hmm. If we become them, then what was the point? Exactly. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Hey, hey, hey. Guys, I don't know if I'm the only one feeling like this, but I don't think I will ever be able to recover from watching Sheng Abizi Jeng. I'm only having his issue pronouncing his name. Watching him for once defending Trump in this life, in this our generation. Is this real? Or did he do this because of Anna? Because see, let's face it, Anna is a Anna is a conservative. She's a conservative at heart. When you hear her speak, she sounds so reasonable. She's always trying to be, you know, play the middle field. Be like, okay, no, no, let's not be this, let's not. <laughs> this is amazing. Like, uh, I don't know what to say for Joy, but I'm praying for her so that God will help her. She needs to be saved. Like seriously, did you guys notice when Trump was entering RSC? Did you notice his face, his demeanor? Something about him changed. Do you know what it means for you to come like a few inches of your life being taken away from you? Like I'm just I would just imagine what must have been going on in his head at that moment. The way he was walking in. It wasn't he didn't walk in like the usual Trump way. He was just so calm. Did you guys notice that? Like we need to pray for that man. He needs he needs to be prayed for but and I trust God to keep you know protecting and keeping him. God will use him to do what he wants to use doing his life. Well let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Are you surprised by what Shen did? Let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye guys.